Good evening, and welcome to UCSD Conversations. I'm Mary Walshock, Associate Vice Chancellor for Public Programs at the University of California, San Diego. It is my pleasure to introduce you to some of our faculty and their cutting edge research. Please join us for an enlightening evening of conversation. As UCSD prepares to celebrate its 40th anniversary, Chancellor Robert Dines shares his thoughts on the state of the campus and gives us a glimpse into the university's exciting future. But first, reflections on a vibrant past from some of the personalities who helped shape UCSD's first four decades. The founding of UCSD serves very well in every way as marking the birth of what I think of as modern San Diego. The transition from that Midwestern Southern cul-de-sac into a city of some renown academically, uh, notoriety, uh, because of the university, and particularly because of the great spin-off from the campus of what now, two or three hundred uh, institutions, businesses, research labs that have been directly related to and had their origins in the campus. faculty who were at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in a sense were the core faculty around which the rest of the university was built and they focused on excellence and they insisted on bringing people in who were indeed uh, excellent. There were very few people here. I mean, you see, he had hardly started. It was all down here at Scripps. Hal Dury came at the time and a few other people, Jim Arnold. You weren't coming to an empty field or a place where all was construction and there was, nobody knew what it was going to be like. You were coming to a place where you could talk to people like Walter Monk, to people like Fred Speaks, people who were already just very, very well-established investigators. Unquestionably, the top attraction was Roger Avell himself. The more I saw him, the more impressed I was. Uh, I had been at places, particularly the University of Chicago, where I knew Nobel laureates and you know, all sorts of famous people. And it was obvious to me that Roger belonged in that circle. I was a... Uh young columnist on the Union Tribune, and Roger Revelle was great copy. He was tall and fearless and, uh, and quite different from the run-of-the-mill uh, San Diegan of that era. Roger was director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography when I came to know him. And he was outraged that his graduate students were supervised from UCLA 120 miles away. He, uh, he, he, he felt the deep need for a um, science-related university uh, to which they could have access. Just above Scripps Oceanography were all those nice tarry pines that the city owned. And he began his campaign. He was able to attract people with imagination who, who were able to visualize how wonderful it would be to be part of a, of a new campus. Well, they were still down at Scripps, and that was when Harold Urey came. He was one of the great triumphs in getting him to come out from Chicago. This was sort of a nucleus before they thought of the whole undergraduate campus and graduate campus came, that there was this group who were not oceanographers, but who had offices at Scripps. Harold himself didn't want one on the ocean side. He didn't want to be distracted. <laughs> The idea that 
it would start as a sort of as a graduate school is almost unique in the American experience. I think it happened at Chicago, and I think it happened at Johns Hopkins, and I think that's it. And uh, that was not generally supported by UC. Berkeley thought it was all right. UCLA bitterly opposed it. And in fact, I remember a letter they wrote that we should start uh, as a lower division, undergraduates only, and after a few years, maybe consider having upper division undergraduates. And, and I remember we replied that they should remember that Scripps had had PhD students when they were still a teacher's college. <laughs> we weren't going to do that. Clark Kerr, the president of the university, sent down a speaker who addressed a full uh, auditorium of La Jolla High School about what the university was going to be like. I was pleased that he even mentioned that not all the students would be white, which was, I think, in the La Jolla of those days, uh, in some circles, a dangerous admission. A woman was coming out with two male escorts on either side, and she said to them, said to herself, I keep telling myself, it's better than an oil refinery, it's better than a cement factory. And it was obvious that she was going to vote for it. La Jolla then was a pretty um, conservative group. I think the average income was pretty high, and a lot of retired people here who were pretty wealthy. My, my daughter, who's now a professor at Berkeley, claimed that in her school at La Jolla Elementary, she was the only student in her class that was a Democrat and the only one that didn't own a horse. <laughs> sort of taken for granted. Roger would be the first chancellor. He had been chief campus administrator. He'd started every, things. He started recruiting. Then he ran afoul of Regent Pauley, who was chairman, board of regents. And uh, President Kerr decided that it wouldn't be possible to get him to be chancellor and suggested we ask uh, Herb York. People made it clear to me that in, in various ways that, uh, that uh, things had not come out the way they wanted with respect to who was appointed chancellor. But I couldn't say that there was a particular item of business in which uh, this played a role. And I had good relationships with Roger himself from the very beginning. We had talks about uh, what was happening here, who was being recruited, uh, what uh, his ideas uh, were for the future and so on. One of the issues when I arrived here in 1961 was a still unresolved matter, or only partially resolved matter, of, uh, of building a general campus modeled after Berkeley or a much narrower institution modeled after Caltech, perhaps even a Caltech without any undergraduates. And what was underway here was building what was called a School of Science and Engineering and that was uh, modeled more closely after Caltech. As Roger said, build the roof first and then the rest of the building. And, and that was the idea, recruit, first-class faculty with, a, with PhD programs going into place immediately, and then undergraduate programs coming along in a few years after the key departments are established. And there are lots of reasons why that was right, and although it was completely novel as far as I know, and uh, it was done. The one place where the interests of Clark Kerr and Roger Avell and the others already here coincided, coincided very powerfully and very fruitfully was in the notion of quality, uh, of high quality in the faculty, 
and in the idea that here at San Diego we, we would get special attention to that and that we would be able to start at least the science departments uh, with graduate work and then add undergraduate work later. Those were, our pla those were two places where there was a coincidence between what Clark Kerr and his people wanted and what Roger Ravel and his people wanted. And that was a very important part of getting us started, played a very important role in making us not merely another first-class campus of the University of California, but a first-class, you know, but, but, uh, but gave us the national, the exceptional national status that we had. Some people thought that, that the town would be totally spoiled, there'd be all these rowdy students, and that it would be just making the town grow so that it wouldn't be nice anymore. But I've always felt that you can't blame the tall buildings along Prospect Street on the university, and it, it, the town certainly has changed a great deal, a lot of it I don't like at all, including those tall buildings, but uh, I don't really think they can be blamed on the campus, and it certainly brought such interesting people here. I uh, had gotten a fellowship in uh, my home country, Germany, which uh, insisted on sending the, fe uh, the fellows abroad for a year to broaden, uh, to broaden their horizon, basically to any professor they would like to choose, who, which would help the education of the individual. And so I chose a professor, Professor Helmut Röhrl, in the University of uh, Minnesota in Minneapolis. Uh, who enthusiastically wrote back that yes, he very much would like to have me as a student, uh, except for one thing that he was, he and much of his department were on, on their way to a brand new campus which he described as UCLJ um, or perhaps UCSD. And uh, so uh, I uh, heard that and went to an atlas, which is actually a correct uh, an, an, uh, anecdote and looked all over Florida for San Diego and couldn't find it. And after a while I, I realized my mistake and I was on my way to San Diego into a university which I believe in those days had, had 160 uh, undergraduates and 160 graduate students. And I arrived in January of 1965, second half of the first full operational year for undergraduate education as a graduate student, as a teaching assistant in this university. Um, and needless to say, it, I realized, realized very, very fast that this was an incredible, uh, unusual opportunity of having a high class faculty, highest class faculty, with barely any students around. I really was doing basic reporting uh, on something that, that hadn't happened. Everything from um, the arrival of John Galbraith as chancellor, just a basic interview of who this man was. Uh, the finishing of what is now Galbraith Hall, which was the first library. The fact there were no traditions, there were no alums. It was really a blank slate. I was a student here from 1966 to 70, so I was the third graduating class. And when I got here in the fall of 1966, there were fewer students here than in my high school, Point Loma High School. I think about 2,200 students. Um, one thing that was interesting was about two-thirds of them were men. So dating was very difficult. You couldn't find anybody to, to take out. And if you did, they were, they'd rather be in the library doing studies than to uh, go out on a date. So it was a completely different social scene in, this, in 1966. Uh, of course, the campus itself was a lot smaller than it is today. There were, everything revolved around Ravel College. Uh, Muir and all the other colleges were we're in the distance, and um, we knew each other. Uh, the students and the faculty were very close. You run into faculty members all the time uh, on the quad in Ravel Plaza, and it was a kind of a quiet, small college atmosphere at, at that time. One thing that's interesting about UCSD in those days was that it was really isolated from San Diego. It was not that easy to get from here to uh, San Diego itself, downtown San Diego, or the attraction. So there were some students who went their entire four years at UCSD and never went to the San Diego Zoo, for example, or Balboa Park. Um, they stayed up here in the campus. Uh, it was, access was difficult, uh, and trans public transportation was almost none. So if you got anywhere, you'd go down into La Jolla. And 
Uh, of course, the, many people remember that La Jolla was somewhat of two minds about welcoming UCSD within its uh, ranks. Uh, I think the, the idea of just having lots of students, you know, long-haired students, wander around their streets unnerved some of them. So, uh, but it, we'd go to the Rat Sculler for a hamburger or something in, in downtown La Jolla, and you'd see students and faculty down there doing that every so often. The protest side of things was um, very pronounced right about the time I started in uh, the campus. I never took a class from Herbert Marcuse, but um, he was certainly a lightning rod for the, the protest movement. He was sort of an um, elderly figure who walked around the campus. He wasn't fiery by any means, but uh, he had a loyal, loyal following. And so there, the Angela Davis was here at the same time, too, as one of his assistants. I was put into the impossible position of having to represent the faculty in arguing his reappointment when I really didn't have much respect for him. But I did go and did argue his reappointment, did succeed against considerable opposition in the, within the Board of Regents. And I remember coming back from a Regents meeting and, and, and stopping at the Marcuse house to tell him that he had been reappointed. And, Instead of being well received, they saying, "How could I possibly have doubted that that was the right thing to do?" and being very disappointed. When I recently saw the, a documentary about that time on television, and it was described that the university was in total turmoil with no ability of doing its work, I can attest to that as one of the witnesses that that was not the case. Yes, we knew that there was lots of stuff. Uh, going on on the plaza, and um, and we had to kind of wiggle our way through uh, through the people. Yes, I remember very distinctly uh, body bags with burned people being on on Revel Plaza, and I and, and it certainly moved me, uh, and um, and uh, uh, made us all think. But the progress of the university as an institution of higher learning and as the institution of of of, of science as far as I can tell, as far as I was a part of it, continued strongly during that time. It's important to realize that we called the colleges one, two, and three before they had names. So third college was given, its na given that name because it was number three in the series. Very soon, though, because of the issues of relevance and the more broad, broader issues about diversity and race, the notion of third college as being particularly involved with the third world, and that meant both the internal third world in America, minorities in America, and it meant with the third world, the colonial world, outside the university. So third world outside the United States. So third world in the most general sense. And with the idea that uh, faculty, students uh, would be a more, uh, there'd be a focus on diversity, and that the academic and the teaching and research program would also have a focus on third world issues, again, both internal and external. Diversity came to San Diego as a surprise. That suggests to me that there was not a whole lot of dialogue between campus and city about diversity in those decades because it was not uh, well understood at either place. On the matter of, of Herb York hiring Joe Watson, that, that was a, uh, a very solid move and an early move. I would say one of the main uh, matters was the opening of Third College at that time, now Marshall College because uh, you had two colleges prior to that, Ravel and Muir, but now you introduce a third college which had a very strong social as well as academic uh, thrust. So that changed the dynamic of the, co of the campus uh, quite considerably and in many respects brought, if you will, the civil rights movement onto the campus in a very explicit uh, and, uh, and central uh, way. It was mainly a traditional uh, college campus, uh, by that I mean mainly Caucasian, uh, that the students came from middle class and uh, uh, backgrounds in the main. Uh, very much comfortable 
in their futures and felt that they could engage social issues at the time. But still, once they decided to get down, do their uh, academic work and graduate, they had a great future ahead of them. This was a college that was committed to non-traditional students. Did that also mean non-traditional faculty, non-traditional curricula? How do you mesh those things on a research campus in which the faculty were committed to bring in colleagues who had national research standing in terms of their scholarship? So those are a period of considerable tension. I think most definitely that, uh, and you can look at this as good and, or bad, uh, but it certainly was an outgrowth of the 60s turmoil, the efforts of society to try to come to grips with problems that were long ignored or certainly not solved, and certainly not solved today. periods of heavy growth uh, in the 80s, uh, and then a flat period in the 90s, particularly when there was the budgetary problems in the state. And of course, now we're going to enter a very rapid uh, period of growth. I think one of the other changes that has occurred, particularly in the uh, 80s and 90s for the campus, is that our nature has changed, particularly with respect to attractiveness to, uh, to students. Uh, the early period of the campus, we were relatively narrow in major offerings and also what we offered for student life. And beginning in the uh, 80s, that changed. We became a more comprehensive and complete campus, both in academic uh, majors and courses, but also in terms of facilities and programs for, for students. I think there was a sense of community, but it wasn't, it wasn't a community in a sense of uh, some of the Ivy Leagues or some of the older schools where the entire institution feels a sense of affinity for it. Um, it was very, very much at a college level, and even within Ravel College, you know, where I went, there was, there was this, you know, sub-communities within the school with this commuter students, with those who lived in certain residence halls, those who were involved in athletic programs. Um, those in some of the academic environments. So communities were much smaller, you know, from what I recall um, back, in, back in the 80s. So there were, you know, when there were events like the campus on Olympics, even at that point, we didn't compete for some UCSD overall goal. It was this college versus that college. And you know, there were three or four events every year that really brought a college together as a whole. And, um, so that's, that's what I recollect from a sense of community. It wasn't this, this institution-wide um, sense of belonging. Well, the watermelon drop was probably the, the one thing that we looked forward to every year, and, and I actually tried out for it one year. Didn't, didn't win, didn't become the watermelon queen. <laughs> which is probably good <laughs> in the long run. One of the great things that we did at Ravel College, and but I, that was really one of you know the watermelon drop was a campus-wide event. Watermelon Queen. All right, let's drop it now. Are you ready? On the count of three, let's hear it. One. I would guess Dick Atkinson made an e a larger effort than 
most of his predecessors to get into the community and to bring the community into the campus. When I got here, I realized uh, just how uh, early it was in its development. Uh, I mean, there was hardly any uh, administrative structure to the institution, the notion of uh, the organization of vice chancellors, deans, schools, and the like, it just, there just hadn't been time to develop. So we didn't look like the traditional university, and we still don't look like the traditional university, and I think that's an advantage because it's permitted us to be very innovative in the way the institution uh, developed. We all say in the Alumni Association that our, our uh, diplomas get more valuable by the year because the students get better and better and they kind of pull all of us up, the founders and the original classes up intellectually because they're just outshine us. Every year we give the Alumni Association honors uh, the best students and, and uh, faculty and so on. It's just, it's incredible how brilliant and well-rounded the students are today. I would say most definitely Roger Revelle should be pleased with what has occurred because uh, the two principal objectives of the school, academic research excellence has been achieved as well as a focus on the quality and excellence of the undergraduate program and the quality of life for undergraduate students has also been achieved. I think there are goals and, and principles that can serve this campus well into the next century and after that. Finally tonight, an update from UCSD Chancellor Robert Dines in conversation with New York College Provost Pat Levin. Emily's mother. Bob Dines, I'm the Chancellor here at UCSD. Oh, great. Nice to meet you. Well, Emily, where are you from? Sacramento. Sacramento. You drove down yesterday, did you? Yeah. Good school. And you're excited. She's excited. She is. She's excited. You know, I, I understand. I, I went through this about 10 years ago with my own daughter. My guest for this section of our special 40th anniversary UCSD conversation is, appropriately enough, the Chancellor of UCSD, Robert Dines. Uh, Bob came to UCSD in 1990 as a professor of physics from a very successful career at Bell Laboratories where he was a senior scientist. Uh, after being here just a short time, he became chairman of the Department of Physics, then vice chancellor for academic affairs, and then in 1996 he was appointed chancellor by then and now president of the University Atkinson. Bob, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure, Pat. Uh, you have, this is a great time to be chancellor, I think. I, I think it is, too. If I could stop and take a <laughs> breath and think about it, I'd probably agree with you. I, I'm not a surfer, but I've seen surfing movies. Uh, do you have the feeling that you are, you've done a lot of paddling? Are you, you're out there, and a very big wave is beginning <laughs> to develop, and you're going to get a terrific ride for well, the next... Uh, 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 maybe, maybe that's a good Maybe the analogy is skiing down a hill. All right, I'm not skiing uh, either. So. Where, where, you're, where you're really going down this hill and, uh, and it's steep enough that you can't stop. Right. And you try to control it as well as you can. But you're having a terrific ride. But it's exhilarating. That's great. Uh, let's take a snapshot. The first part of this program dealt with sort of the history of UCSD, how we got to where we are, which is a pretty remarkable place. Uh, let's take a snapshot of UCSD right now. We're 20,000 students. Um, yep. I've lost track of how many faculty. Well, uh, 1,100 uh, uh, or so? On, on the campus, it's yes. about, it's about uh, 650 yes, to 700, right. and then the School of Medicine has the, has the other the 500 or so yes, that, that, right. that make up right. 1,100. Yeah. Um, annual budget of? The annual budget now, it keeps going up. It, of course. I, I just heard the other day it's now $1.5 billion. Billion dollars. Billion dollars. A lot of people in San Diego don't know that. Uh, I mean, I ask people. No, I know that, and, and um, that's a lot of money. And it's it's an enormous amount of money that, that comes it comes from various of sources. Course. It comes from the federal government, comes right. from private philanthropy, comes right. from the state. Yeah. About twenty percent of it comes from the state. That's one of the remarkable statistics, actually. That that for every dollar the state puts into UCSD, we generate an additional four. That's right. Well, yeah. Which are mostly spent here in San Diego. It's, it's, it's almost all spent in San Diego. Of course, a lot of it is spent in research and, and of employment of people. Sure. Uh, trying new things. Right. Uh, running health, hospitals. Running hospitals, health care, uh, um, trying to develop better, better, better health treatments. It's, 
most of it is spent in San Diego, uh, spinning out new companies. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it really is an engine here in San Diego. And, and the, the, the really, one of the pleasant parts of the job is that most of the people in San Diego appreciate that it is an engine in San yes. Diego. And yes. we have good relations with, yes. the, with the San Diego yes. community. Yes. That was not always true, I might remark, I, as you probably I, I, know. I know that. I am told that. Yes. And, and, uh, yes. and well, I have seen the remnants of the... Of well, the, we had a troubled time the yes. first 10 years or so. But starting with uh, Chancellor McElroy, Bill McElroy in the, in the 70s, said we have to have a tie right. with our community. He did. And then Dick Atkinson, of course, uh, made that a, a very important part of what, what he did. And of course, the university changed as well as the community, yes. I mean, over that time. Yes. And now there's a symbiosis, which clearly is beneficial for everyone, it seems to me. It, it is interesting, Pat, because when I, when I talk with many of my other colleagues mm -hmm. in, the, in the AAU and many of my colleagues in the University of California, the different campuses, uh, they look with envy at the relationship that we have Good. with San Diego. Good. Good. Because it's not the same everywhere. And it's not automatic. No, you have to work at it. You have to work at it. There's a, there's a, um, there's a sense that, uh, that we're a bunch of fuzzy-haired sure. academics on sure. the hill and, sure. uh, and we don't care about the community. Right. And right. that, of course, is not true. Of course not. No. But there no. is that sense. Yeah. But we are out in the community in lots of ways, actually. And I'm proud of that, actually. Uh, I, I, ways that are appropriate to a research university, but yeah. still out there in the community. Yes. And now, part of the 40th anniversary, which we're proud that we have reached that early adolescence, I guess, in terms of university, but it's still a significant time. We're going to have some special events in the community? We will. We, uh, we, are, uh, we have scheduled uh, 40 gifts to the, oh. to the community. Uh, nice idea. Uh, uh, reasoning that if we uh, announced our 40th birthday, nobody would give us a present, so we decided to give, <laughs> give presents back. That's a good thing. And, uh, and, and they will be gifts of service to the community. Uh, some of them will be, uh, will be, will be gifts of... Uh, of discussions, uh, of, of formal presentations, of, of, of music, art, sure. uh, theater, uh, my going out to the community and, and discussing with the community what things we do in health care and health for the community, yes. things of that nature. Yes, sure, sure. So 40 for 40. That's 40 the, for 40, yeah. But we do a lot more than that. I mean, we're oh. out in the community in, in hundreds of ways, I suspect. I, I'd be it's hard literally to hundreds. There, literally. Uh, okay. At last count, uh, there, uh, there were there were something of the order of 300 various ways that were out there. Uh, some are really, uh, really have enormously high profile, uh, and others are really just one or two people that really feel a sense of, of commitment mm -hmm. to the community. I mean, high profile ones are our, the relationship that we have developed with the K through 12 in the community. Sure. Very high profile. Yes. Um, uh, the highest profile of that portion being the Preuss School, of course. Uh, and, and some of the health care programs that we have um, in, the, um, in, in, in downtown San Diego for, for, for the less fortunate. Mm -hmm. The, the Price School is a good example. All of these things, though, reflect not just our concern about the community, but our concern as a research university. Yes. I mean, everything we do is, is tied to the fact that we're a special kind of place. Right. right. Yes. No, that's, that's true. If, if, um, we, if, if we were just doing things of service that were not related somehow to our, our research mission, uh, I don't think there'd be anything special about it. Right. Right. And I don't think that it would gain the traction and the enthusiasm mm -hmm. amongst our faculty and staff and students mm -hmm. that it has. Justifiably so. Right. And the, the, reason, the reason that it does gain uh, the enthusiasm is that we learn something from it. We're being a little selfish. Uh, when we go out and we do these various things, the Price School is a good example, uh, we feel a sense of commitment to, uh, to young people who are perhaps not going to get the, the, the best education. We, we want to figure out how, way, better ways to do it. Sure. But in the process, we have some of our, our, our best faculty learning and, and, and trying to try new ways of, of transmitting information, new ways of educating, new ways of teaching, and measurement. Yes. How do you determine yes. what works and what doesn't work? Sure. And, and this is research. This is a very difficult area in determining, in, in measuring the quality of education. So, so, so some of our faculty look upon this as a great research yard. In fact, is the history of that, just to go back just a bit, the history of that here at UCSD, I think, is, 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 is an interesting one because the early response of the faculty was guarded. Yes. All right, and, and I think justifiably so. I had worked with Cecil early days on. I was very enthusiastic. About <laughs> I remember it, I you say. were. <laughs> but, uh, but they were, the faculty was right. It had to fit into our kind of place, not just be a school on our campus, all right? And through the development of CREATE, yep. which, which creates partnerships, research opportunities, now the Price School 
fits into that category. Yeah, I think the Proy School is now regarded by, by, by the university as, as something that we're really quite proud of. Oh, absolutely. And that it, that it indeed is part of our mission as opposed to something that was off separate. Yes. Originally, I think it was envisioned to be some, some, something somewhat off separately, and, and the faculty, for the most part, felt quite uneasy about yes. it and, they, yeah. and felt, felt that uh, without the engagement of, of the best minds on the campus, it might fail. Mm. And, uh, and so, uh, so we, we, of course, as you remember, um, took a second look at it, spent, uh, spent a rather anguishing summer yes. creating Create. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, and, Paul Drake and, and, and Nick Spitzer. Paul Drake and Nick Spitzer and, and, all, and all, those, all those people that I'm forever yep. beholden absolutely. to. Absolutely. Um, really, did, uh, really did redefine the role that the university would have in outreach. And Create was the umbrella, and the Price School was one of the one of the crown jewels yeah. under the, underneath that umbrella. Yeah. And as a result of that, when it when it was when it worked back through, the faculty and the faculty saw yes, indeed, that's something that's consistent with a research university. They were very enthusiastic. Then it, then it was then it sure, was sure. then it just went right on through. But the other element to the Price School, what is its name, is that it is a real collaboration with the community in a whole variety of ways. There are parents groups, but also the fundraising. We had to raise private money to we build did. the school. We did. The, um, the school itself was built all through private funding. Uh, the Generous people in the community. And, and, uh, and it, was a, it, was, it was a lot of people from, from many directions yes. were very enthusiastic about it. Mm. And, um, and, it is, uh, and it was funded. It came in on time and on budget. And it's doing wonderful things as far as we can I, I, tell. The, the first, it's very exciting. Uh, I, I tell you, the yeah. first, the test scores the first yes, year just, right. I just, my, my, my heart just soared. And but just driving by there and seeing all those kids in their uniforms in front of that handsome structure, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, no. it's a good thing. But lots of other things are going on here. I hear we're going to have a school of pharmacy or pharmacy indeed, program. Indeed, indeed. Um, this summer, the regents approved a school of pharmacy inside inside the school of medicine. Uh, and and that's, this is really exciting because it's, it won't be a traditional school of pharmacy. We're, we're really lucky in the sense that uh, uh, we have just now decided to, to, to construct a school of pharmacy, and it really won't be a traditional pharmacy. It'll be a school of pharmacology. Ah, it'll, right. be, it'll be a school that will be looking at 21st century pharmacy, gene therapy, and, and, and biochemistry, and biochemistry in the basic sense. In the right. basic sense. Right. It, it, it will, and, and the nice thing about it is it's going to integrate other parts of the campus. Some of the faculty will come from biochemistry. Some of the faculty will come from bioengineering. Right. Uh, and, and so it'll bring the strengths of the campus into this uh, so that as we, as we look to medicine in the 21st century, we'll, which will be w much more of, 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 of anticipating, you know, right. looking Prevention. at your genes, sure. your Pat sure. Ledden's genes, and your sure. grandchildren's sure. genes, sure. Sure. Um, and, 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 and designing drugs that will be expressly for that particular person. Right. So it's, it's, it's a terrific opportunity. Opportunity. Exciting terrific opportunity. opportunity. And it builds on our strengths. It builds exactly on our on, strengths. On our strengths. We also have a new Sixth College. Sixth College is another exciting one. As, Absolutely. As we, as, we, uh, as we go forward with Sixth College, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the theme of the Sixth College will be something along the lines. It hasn't, hasn't sure, been, of course, worked through the faculty work yet, yeah. but it'll be something along the lines of, of, of computers and the arts and, and, and culture and things like yes. that, things that are happening in California yes. right now. Yeah. And, uh, and if you look at the way the university, the, 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 the things that we are doing in the university right now, uh, they are not traditional departmentally driven. They are looking ahead. At, as, as our new dean of the School of, 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 of Medicine says, and I like the analogy, he said, we're, we're sort of the Wayne Gretzky. I, I'm a hockey player, of course, <laughs> years ago. We're the Wayne Gretzky of the university. Uh, we, we, we look to where the puck will be, not where the yes, puck is. Right, right, right. His and secret, no question. Uh, I hope we are that good, because <laughs> he was pretty special. Uh, yes. But it, I, was on the, I was on the search committee for the provost, the new provost of yes. Sex College. And I, one of the things that struck me, just to agree exactly with what you're saying, was the enthusiasm not only of the candidates for the job, but for the faculty who had been engaged in the early yeah. planning of the thing. That here was an opportunity to do some interdisciplinary kinds Absolutely. of things, to, to look at not where we've been, but where we're going and where our society is going, where our culture is going, and the kinds of impact we could make on an inter undergraduate program in yes. that regard. It's an exciting sort of oh, progress. No, it really it is. is. I, in fact, I, I have to reflect 
uh, a little bit on the college system. When, when you look at that, it, if we didn't have the college system, we wouldn't have this opportunity. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, yes. and, and we wouldn't have this opportunity to, to differentiate. I was with a, with a group of young entrepreneurs the other day uh, who here here in San Diego. And one of the questions that the person asked me was, why would, I, why would I want my child to go to UCSD as opposed to UCLA or Berkeley? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and spontaneously, the first thing out of my mouth was the college sister. Sure. Uh, which, uh, which, which clusters small colleges, the small college environment inside a major and, a, and increasingly really, major. really, really moving uh, research, research university. Yeah. Yeah. You have a human scale, but right. the opportunities right. of this great university, and it works. I mean, it, and, and it does work. I have a son who did it, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it works. And, and it, it, worked, it worked very well. Uh, we're going to have a new sixth college, probably a seventh at some time Most likely. Uh, down the road, but that's probably eight, or eight years or so, something. Who knows? Might depends be on the growth. Depends, depends on the growth. Depends on the growth. Uh, there's a big new engineering initiative, I gather, that we were very hopeful of, of getting. Uh, yes. Uh, let me talk a little bit about that. It's, uh, it's, we, we call it CalIT Squared, which is Cal California IT Institute of Telecommunications and Information Technology. IT, IT. Right, IT, enough. IT, right. um, and 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 what it's aimed at is is to try to try to bring together. If you're in the telecommunications business, if you're in, if you if you're selling cellular phones these days, and you're not worried about how you're going to deal with the data stream and the information that that, that is coming in, you're not going to uh, you're going to be out of business for a long time. You're right. going to be out of business. Yep. Or the other side of it is if you're in the if you're in the um, the uh, PC business. Yes. And you're not wor beginning to worry about how you are going to transmit and receive data and how you're going to deal of with course. that data. You're going to be out of that business yes. as well. Right. And so it's clear that those two, uh, those two technologies are going to come together, are coming together of course. so enormously rapidly. And, um, and, and if you look at the strengths, both here in San Diego, in, in industry and, and, what, and, and, uh, and commerce, and at UCSD, mm -hmm. Uh, it's clear it's a that natural. it's a natural. It just fits like a yeah. glove all the way from from the, the sort of fundamental physical sciences of how 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 much information you can pack into sure. a magnetic memory, all the way to the ethics of mm -hmm. what's going yeah. to happen. Right. How, whether you can convey, how you convey. When you convey right. it, how do you protect it? Of course. What what what, what is access? what how is in the public domain? Sure. What is not in the sure. public domain? Sure. It's, it's th exactly the right thing for a university to be thinking about. Yes, yes. And yes. we have submitted this proposal mm -hmm. to the, the state of California, one of the, th one of the, one of the six mm -hmm. that, uh, that have been submitted. I am enormously mm -hmm. confident that we're going to we're we're win this. Be a, be a, be a, mar be a big plus oh, to yeah. our whole program. And, and, and to San Diego. And to San Diego. Well, the great thing about it from the, from the school, from the university, is that uh, every division on the campus is engaged. Going to participate. Everyone. It's fantastic. OK. So that, that means a lot for us in the long term. Yeah, it does. It means yeah. a lot in the long term. We're also going to do a major expansion of our health center here on the, on the, in the La Jolla uh, Cancer Center, increase in Shiley, increase in Thornton. Yes. Big, big development. Yeah. The, the, the vision there is that, uh, is that uh, it's time for us mm -hmm. to build a, a true academic medical center mm -hmm. over on the east side of the campus. Uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the notion is, the vision is to have the Thornton Hospital uh, which will be expanded to some extent as uh, as the as the, as the, the base, population right. as the community expands, right. and then clustered around it will be uh, will be these centers: a cancer center, uh, a much expanded Shiley, a cardiovascular center, and other ones as we as we as we see appropriate, mm -hmm. that will focus on 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 bringing together uh, fundamental research people, which we do very well. The yes. fundamental research part of it translational and clinical care so that we will have clinics in these same buildings yes. as research people. Mm -hmm. The idea uh, is, to some extent I lived with this at Bell Laboratories where you, where you had fundamental scientists mm -hmm. and where you had uh, the application you folks. had application folks in the same sure. building. Right. And uh, when you eat lunch together you actually talk about your problems. Sure. Sure. And, and the hope is that we can do a better job of, of this translational medicine taking from the fundamental mm -hmm. to the bedside. Uh, in, a, in, a, in an effective sure. way, so that we can better deliver health care, and f not only for UCSD, but for all the health care deliverers sure. in, in sure. San Diego. That's what's actually going on in engineering. That's where what's the basic, going on in the engineering. Basic, and that's very quickly. There, I mean, there right. sometimes it's speed of light. I mean, right. it's from the basic discoveries out into the, into the commercial sector. That's what's and going so on. So the idea, in a certain sense, is to, to, to do that in health care. Yes. Right. Yes, to do that, to do that in, a, in the environment where, where we literally will have 
patients coming to the same building where research yes. is being done. But you need to have them all in the same place. You bet. In a sense. I mean, it doesn't work to be spread around. You I bet. I, I, um, Contiguity is an important issue. Uh, it, it is interesting. People say, well, in this, in this era of, of telecommunications sure. and all, you, 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 do, you don't need you people have to have together. Lunch together. And, and the answer is no. If you you're not looking at together. somebody straight yes. in the face, right. it doesn't yeah, work. It doesn't. And, and you need to have the, the, the sort of the curious interactions that you can't plan. It's 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 a little bit like teaching in, in my view um, that uh, that if you're standing up there lecturing to a, a, a bunch of students and you're looking in their faces and they're looking blank yes it, it something tells you you're not getting through that's to right them. that's if right if you're talking to a camera that it doesn't, doesn't work it doesn't happen no absolutely not uh, it's a pretty exciting time sure I'd, is. I'd like to think about uh, this is our 40th anniversary uh, 10 years from now we'll be 50. Sounds pretty young to me, right? It's, it's early adolescence, <laughs> I still think. But uh, for universities, and certainly for the universities we compare ourselves to. Yes, indeed. It's very young. Yes. It is, it even 50 is very young. But where do you see us? Where do you, and, what are, and, and to get to where you'd like to see us, what are, the sort of, what are some, of the, some of the real challenges? I mean, it's one thing to deal with these current issues. But right. the, my, my view is that, uh, let me tell you where I think we would like where, to. where I would like us yes. to be, and then let me go back and... Sure. and and, and, and frame out how, sure. I think we, how I think we can get there. And I think it's very, very, very possible. Uh, I, would, I would like us to be uh, in the top few, the top half dozen universities ranked in the country. Yeah. And I don't care how the ranking occurs, whether it's undergraduate education, whether it's research, whether it's health care, whether it's public Graduate training, training, whatever. Graduate training. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't care mm -hmm. what, what the, how the very ranking is made. Wrong. I want us to be up there with those other schools that will remain un unnamed that we are a little bit behind now. We're probably, we're probably 10th in the nation right now. Uh, and if you look above 10, uh, there's some pretty good schools we have to knock off Absolutely. on the way. Absolutely. Uh, but I, I would like to see us up there, and I think we can make it. Uh, the opportunity that we have in terms of the growth that we're facing over the next 10 years in going from 20,000 students to 30,000 students will give us the resources I mean, they're not going to come for free. We're going to have no. to work for those sure. resources, but will give us the resources, and the um, and the and it'll just enable us to get there. It's easier to improve if you're adding resources than right. if you're replacing resources. Right. right. No, I, it, it, I mean, just just very simply, um, that's big growth. Uh, recruiting uh, recruiting 700 new faculty. If we do as good a job as our predecessors did. Yes. In recruiting faculty, yes. Uh, yes. that'll be that'll that'll be part of part of yes. getting there. Not all of it, but no. that'll be part no. of getting there. No, no. It, but that's a real challenge. Yes, it I is. Mean, it's one thing to hire ten outstanding faculty. <laughs> to hire a hundred outstanding faculty. Yeah. I mean, the cost, the, the the selection process, the other pressures. Well, the message the message that I, I give to everybody whenever I whenever I'm talking about this is is very simply uh, to go out and find who you think is the best and the brightest. Yes. Don't necessarily hire into a Slot. position. Don't ever try to replace somebody. Absolutely. Um, and if you don't get that person, if you don't get him or her, uh, start again. Yeah. Don't take the second Wait a year. choice. Wait a year. Don't, because that yes. slot will still be there. That FTE will still be there right. the right. next year for you to find that person. Yes. So be patient and yes. find the right person. Because we're going to be competing with everybody else in that top 10. That's right. Right, who don't want us to take That's all right. the good ones. That's right. right. So we're going to be competing, competing with, sure. with those distinguished and, 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 and old universities yes. in the East right. and a yep. few back here on the West yes. Coast. Yes, right. yes, which is a good thing. I mean, competition is not a bad thing. But it, it will be a real challenge right. to be able to do that. Uh, we need to make sure, I suppose, not I suppose, we need to be sure that in that process we keep the undergraduate program strong. That's, a, that's extremely important, and, and one of the... One of the issues, again, one of the, the when these young uh, entrepreneurs I was talking to the other day asked me why should I send my daughter to, to UCSD, one of the, um, one of the things that I, I, I said, one of the answers that I have is that, is that UCSD uh, really strongly emphasizes something called 199s. Those are research experiences for undergraduates. It, it's my view that, um, that the best thing that we can do for our undergraduates is expose them to the same people who are generating the new knowledge. Absolutely. Um, we, can, we can, of course, give them all the textbook learning, and, and, but anybody can do that. Sure. 
Uh, the difference is that if, if we teach these young people how to be entrepreneurial, how to think, how to, how to, how to be, be out of the box, mm -hmm. how to be creative, the only way they can do that, in, in my view, is to, is, to, is to learn and be exposed to creative people. Right, right. And, and so, so as, as and to watch, watch the false starts, watch and, the, 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 the and, and understand that understand sure. that a, that, a, that uh, sometimes, often you learn more from an idea that didn't work of course, than an idea of that course, did work. Of course, and and that's something that freshmen, virtually all freshmen, don't understand, right. and uh, and and they will understand by being exposed to to to, the, to to our research process, and so. I believe that a very strong emphasis on research experience for undergraduates is very important because they will come out as thinking. Absolutely. No, yeah. and, and that's that's a critical one. Another issue which of course uh, is, is very high on my agenda uh, is, is, that, is that we must expand the diversity on this campus. Absolutely. Um, part of the education, part of what young people are going to be facing is dealing with the enormous cultural breadth of California when they graduate. Absolutely. And, and if, if they don't first learn it here, yes. uh, it's going to be a shock to them yes. when they get yes. out there. So, so part of our role is to build the breadth of cultures on our campus, on our campus so, yes. that, so that these young people, when they come from their homes wherever they are, uh, somewhat sheltered homes wherever they are, and, and they, they begin to try out their ideas that they learn from their parents with, with young people from very different, different cultures. cultures. Yes. Different races, different cultures, sure. different backgrounds. They'll find out which ones of those hold water, sure. which ones of those which don't ones hold work, water. Which ones don't work. So, so part of our educational responsibility is to have as much breadth of culture on this campus yes. as we possibly can and respect for those cultures. Yes. Because they are, our students stay in Southern California. Yep. The vast most majority part. stay in Southern California, and Southern California is increasingly the most culturally and ethnically diverse community, yeah. in the, certainly in the industrialized world. And uh, it's an incredible place. Well, and and the, inter the interesting part of that is that if if you if you make the connection that not only is it so culturally diverse, but it's economically robust. Yes. You perhaps start to think yes. maybe that's an advantage. Yes. And we want to keep it an advantage. I mean, that's that's the other part of uh, part of the role of the University of California. It seems yes. to me is to make sure that, in fact, the the state's economy continues right. to be the sort of strength that it has been for uh, a long time, actually. Yes. Yeah. So looking forward, um, we've talked about education. Mm -hmm. um, research is an interesting one. If I if I think about um, think about where the research university should be, where I would like to see UCSD. Uh, years, 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 years later, maybe ten years from now, um, it, it, it's clear to me, at least, that uh, that research will not follow the traditional paths. Mm -hmm. And we're doing it already, but yes. but I think we have to push it further. Let me give you a few. Sure. And, and so I envision um, research themes cutting a swath through the campus in in many mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. um, Interdisciplinary. That's the word. Or but, but let me give you an example yeah. of what I mean by that. Uh, a, a, a research program that, that, uh, that encompasses all the way from molecular structure to behavior hmm. and sure. everything in between. Sure. Sure. Right? There's, there's, a, there's a whole sure. spectrum sure, sure, in between. Sure. That's not to say there's that... neuroscience, there are just a whole lot of things. All the way, yes, molecular right. Psychology, structures, uh, right. developmental all, psychology, developmental everything. psychology sure. of course. all the way to behavior and, and, um, and you know, protein crystallography, the, the, everything. Sure. Sure. And it's not to say that I, I would expect or, or, or I don't believe that any one person can, can, can have the depth in, in that entire area. But if you have people that have the overlaps, and so people, uh, people have a feeling and understanding of the impact that their research is making on, on subsequent portions, sure. or it, as sure. you integrate it up sure. to sure. human behavior, sure. um, I, I think people have a better feeling for, a, for, an, for, their, for, their, for the impact rather than just doing a crystallography sure. Of, sure. of protein, sure. for example. Sure. Sure. That's one area. And that, I, I have not spoken about any department. No, of course not. Um, there are a lot of departments. Uh, all, yes, yes. Sure. In fact, a large fraction of the departments, sure. including yeah. SIO. Sure, of course. Including School of Medicine. School of Medicine of and the, the natural sciences, right. behavioral right. sciences, arts and humanities. Right. Um, yeah. All yeah. over. So you have to construct, I mean, evolve. 
we have to evolve some structures that will allow this right. this this stre these streams to develop. That's we right. already have some of that, and I we think. have we no have question. some of that. We have the nodes. The supercomputer center sure, acts as, a, as an important Marvel's node. Yes. In, in many of these yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, environmental issues and, and environment and health issues sure. Sure. Um, there's so much information and data that that is that, that, that flows on that if 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 we didn't have the supercomputer center to, 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 to work through how we are going to going to look at the flow of disease yes and the relationship of the flow of disease and environment and and sure. weather patterns sure. et cetera, et etc sure. who wouldn't be able to do yeah. it yeah. Um, so we have to link those. So we have to link those. We have yes. to we have to we have to find leaders in in each of these traditional areas, to to to, to develop the the broader in to look at the overlaps yeah. to look at the overlaps. And it is it is then and there that um, that we will make impact. We will define the new research enterprises. California cultures. Uh, we are beginning a, a a program in California cultures in perspective. Again, it's 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 looking at California. Um, you know the land grant universities were formed originally for agricultural sure, research. Absolutely, and absolutely. then the, then the University of California recognized uh, that science and technology was extremely important, both for education and for the for the health and vitality of California. It's our view now that uh, in addition to those, again looking at at, at at California being such a diverse background, increasingly diverse, increasingly diverse background that we had we should we should really be putting together. A, a group of faculty and and developing educational uh, courses to understand and think through what wh how this is going to evolve yes and so so bringing together uh, faculty and students from different cultures and and thinking through and educating themselves and and everyone else as to the as to the, the cultural issues, the sociological issues, the economic issues, educational issues, educational issues, issues sure. all of these issues yes. Yeah. Um, and so, so we will be starting an initiative in California Cultures in Perspective. Marvelous. Uh, I hope that 10 years from now, I will be able to sit in this very room <laughs> and have another interview. And we will perhaps review this tape and then look back and see how, in fact, the 50th anniversary of UCSD fits into this uh, very exciting project. My guest today has been Robert Dines, the Chancellor at UCSD. I want to thank Chancellor Dines for a very engaging and hopeful conversation. Thank you very much for joining us for this special 40th anniversary UCSD conversation. Sun and alcohol <laughs> don't mix. Goes in your wallet. <laughs> it's okay. I know all this stuff. <laughs> this stuff I know. I, I, I know all this stuff. But right over here, we're selling items that support our scholarship fund if you're interested in looking at the need a soda. Uh, no, I got okay, lots so. of sweatshirts. I don't need some. How about a regular? I don't need any of that stuff. <laughs> I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need any of this stuff. I have got hundreds of T-shirts, but but. Uh, <laughs> And they give them to you, huh? You don't every have to pay for them. I'll buy the T-shirt. Yeah, like every year, every organization. Let me let me get one. It goes straight to the scholarship fund. Scholarship. All right. Okay. Okay. Each year we give a fifty. Give me a T-shirt. Oh, another one. Oh. Great. Do you like it on the back or front? Uh, on the front. Ten dollars. Two bucks. Ten dollars. Extra Thank large you, or large? Large. Large. Right here. Thanks for supporting the scholarship. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, over. all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is like shopping shirts.